Hi, it's Adam from Impact Gamers. And for this uh, introductory retro remake, we are making Lunar Lander from Atari's 1979 arcade smash. Uh, the game was landing a little spaceship on a moon surface. So if we start the game, let's have a look. This one's been made by Charlie and Connor at Impact Gamers. Our spaceship slowly descends to the ground with low gravity. We can rotate it around and use the thrust power to boost to land safely on the pads. Now, as I boost upwards, you'll see the fuel decreases and the altitude decreases we go down. And if I get a nice angle, I get a good landing. That gives me more points, the better I land um, and a small refuel bonus as well. And it keeps going, landing again and again on the same world until I completely run out of fuel. Ways that you can fail and not get any points is if you crash or if you run out of fuel, the game ends. So let's have a quick look at a crash scenario. There we go. Right, let's have a look at how to make it. So I've loaded up Click Team Fusion 2.5, the free edition, and we're going to make a new application. So I'm going to do it from the top menu, clicking File and New. I'm going to be changing the game size. Currently, the whole game is set to 640 by 480 and the frames, the levels, they're set to 640 by 480, also by default. Let's increase that size. So we're going to select Application 1 and we're going to go down to the Properties window here and we're going to change the window settings from 640 by 480. We're going to click on any of those numbers and then press the down arrow and choose 1280 by 800. Now, when we click off, it hasn't done anything yet or press, uh, press enter or select something else. It asks, would you like to modify the size of the frames? That's the levels to match the window of the application. Yes, we do. And you'll see that that's updated the frame size there. Well, let's go into the frame. If we click on it and then select the frame editor from the top menu, once it's selected, we can go into it and you can see that it's a nice large area here. And then we've got a gray sort of area, which is the outside of the play area, outside of what the player can see. We'll add our object in for the game, which is going to be the lander, the lunar lander or the Pluto Parker, depending on what you want to call it. We're going to insert a new object and make sure all objects is selected and then we can choose active. Okay. And click to put down. Now we'll name it immediately. We'll go to the about properties uh, because it's selected. It's referring to the active and we'll call it lander. It's our little spaceship. And then we'll change the way it looks. So we can change the size either in size and position and make it 20 by 20 and just type it in there. But I'll just show you how we can do it in the image editor which is once it's selected, you can press enter or you can right click and edit. In here, we also have a resize option here, size, and we can choose 20 by 20. And if we wanted to keep the image as is, but smaller, we would choose stretch and to do it smoothly, we'd choose resample. Um, but let's apply that. And so now it's 20 by 20. Let's zoom in on the magnifying glass and let's clear it. Now we need to draw our spaceship facing to the right. This is the frame that we're drawing on that's it's selected. So I'm going to just draw sort of the legs of the spaceship. I'm going to use the line tool and just kind of make a V shape there, just very basic. And then an ellipse tool filled in as the kind of egg part of the main part of the lander. And just so we know which way is down, I'm going to just draw a V shape on it in red there. Now, it's really important, however you draw your ship, you make sure the top of the ship's on the right and the bottom of the ship's on the left. That's really important for the angles that we're going to be working with. And the other thing is that we need to move this hotspot to be in the center of mass. So it's well off here, but if we press C, it will put it where the center of the mass is so that it rotates in the right point and all that the physics uh, movement works well. If you want to use our own artwork, feel free but um, it's a nice, easy game to draw your own small, small little sprites in this game, but you can go to import. And if you've downloaded the assets, you can choose lander stopped and make sure that you've got the hotspot set in center of mass. That's the most important thing. Okay. 
and it looks much the same as what I just drew. Right, now, because um, in our game, we need to show when we're, we're thrusting, well, that is sort of like applying power to the spaceship, we're going to change the walking animation. Now, if we select the walking animation, you'll see it's blank, but we want it to be the same as the stopped, but just with some flame. So the quick way of doing that is we can right click on stopped, choose copy, right click on walking and choose paste. And then you can just add in your own flames out the bottom of the spaceship, however you want. You can make it nice and subtle or you can make it bigger. And once again, if you want to, you can just import and it's called lander walking. And make sure that that hotspot is set to the center of the image. So walking animation, by just, just by click team being click team, a fusion being fusion, it does its own thing in terms of when you're moving, it will play the walking animation. When you're not moving, it will play stopped. And because of physics, it will be only when you're pressing the thrust button, it will play the walking animation. So that's great. That's all we need to do for that. Press OK. Next thing we need to do is apply a movement to it. Currently, it'll just stay static. And if we go to its movement properties with it selected and change the type, we can choose physics spaceship movement, which is just on the list under physical movements. It tells us, please insert a physics engine object into the frame. Press OK. It might also tell you that the hotspot needs to be in the center of mass if you haven't done it correctly. So pay attention to that. So um, before we put a physics engine object in the game, let's just go through that physics is mainly about gravity and forces acting on things. And uh, we just need to make sure we've got gravity set up for our spaceship because normal spaceships probably don't fall down in games, but this one will. So we are gonna give it a gravity scale of um, three for the moment, sort of 3%, that's 3% of whatever the gravity is, uh, we'll pull it down. And we want to also change the thruster, sort of the, the way to move forwards. We'll change that to up and the thrust power needs to be low. We're gonna change that to two for the moment uh, and give that, because it's such a small ship, We'll give that a try in a moment, but it won't run. If we do run the frame or the application, it will say you haven't got a physics engine object. So let's put that into the game. Let's close our test application if you copied me there, or if you haven't, well done. Let's insert a new object and it's just called a physics engine. Click OK, it's invisible, but we normally pop it off to the side and then that way we don't need to worry about it. Gravity is set to 10 and the angle is set to 270, which is down, sort of a downwards motion, which is fine. Um, so we can leave it like that. We could, if we want, lower the gravity and then lower the ship, uh, raise the ship's gravity uh, scale to 100%. But for the moment, we'll leave it like this, that the ship only has 3% gravity. So let's run our frame and have a little look. There we are, slowly dropping down. And that's because we set it at 23% gravity. And if I press up, there we go. We can boost and fight against gravity. You can change these settings to uh, whatever you feel is right, but it needs to be very floaty for the moment. You'll find that if we can travel off in any direction off screen, um, so I can just go off here. I might need to give myself a bit more thrust really, and it will just go off screen. So we'll need to, in the next section, um, enlarge the screen and also make it that we can wrap around the play area, that we can travel from one side to the other. So let's, uh, let's just increase our thrust power to three to counteract gravity and save our work. So file, save as. So let's save it as uh, Pluto. Parker. Great. So the next thing we want to do is enlarge the frame. So let's click on frame one there and let's make it twice the size. So I'm going to click on the 1,280 and make it 2,560. Press OK. You can make it as large as you want. I wouldn't necessarily go anywhere over 8,000 because that's just 
pretty huge and uh, you don't need to. You can even leave it if you wanted to at 1280, but because it's scrolled in the original, let's uh, show you how to do that. And also when we make it scroll, it's just currently white, everything's white. So let's uh, add a bit of, uh, of the ground into it, a bit of the lunar surface. So we're gonna insert a new object. It's gonna be active because we'll need to test the collisions and press OK. And we're gonna to click to put it down. Now let's uh, change the about. This is gonna be a crash area, an area that we can't land on. And it's gonna be the first of them because we're gonna make a few. By default, uh, when we add a object in, it's 32 pixels by 32 pixels. You can see it in the size and position there. Now I want to turn on my grid to match everything up. So I'm gonna click on grid setup at the top and it's set to 32 and 32. And we're gonna say snap to and show grid. And then we get these, uh, these dots around the screen where we can place things. Let's change the look of the crash area. If we right click and edit it, it's gonna be a solid block of color. So because it's a lunar surface, I'm just gonna clear this or Pluto surface. I'm just gonna make it a gray color, just a standard gray, press okay. And then what I'll do is I'll use paint mode. If I click paint mode and click on crash area, I can now click and drag with the mouse and start to design a lunar surface and just go along and just go all the way to the end. Now you ideally want your ends to match up in height. So this block here, you can see your coordinates in, in the corner of the screen down the bottom here. So um, this one here, or you can see it in the size and position is at Y value four, nine, five. And this one here is at four, nine, five. So that's great, that'll match up when we go from one side to the other. So we'll go into the event editor and we want a new condition. Now we only want to follow the spaceship while it exists, not when it's been blown up. So we're gonna click on the lander and we're gonna say pick or count compared to the number of lander objects. Now we just wanna press the one, so equal to one, okay. So if there is a lander object in the game, then under scroll storyboard controls, we're going to right click and choose scrollings, center window position in frame, and then we can choose relative to the lander and press OK. Press OK again. Now we can test it. We run our application. We can fly off. The collisions with the background won't work, but it does allow us to see the world. And when we get to the end of the screen, we have the issue that we don't restart. So let's add that in. Close your test application. Just click on the X and let's add a new condition. That if the lander's position, if it's X position, which is its left, right position, if it is greater than, let's find out the frame's width. And remember that the lander is 20 pixels wide. So let's just say that if we, um, if we get within 15 pixels of the edge of the screen, so we're minus 15 from it, then we'll reposition the lander. So we'll right click on the lander, position, set the X coordinate to be 15 pixels in from the other side. So the, it starts off at zero, so 15 is 15 in. Then we just need to do the reverse. New condition, if the lander's uh, position compared to the X position. If this time, if it is lower than 15, then we'll need to position it the other way. So right click position, set the X coordinate to be the frames width minus 15. So it goes on the other side. And with physics, we can't use, there's a movement option for wraparound play area it won't work properly. So we just need to do it with the coordinates of the X position. So let's run our application and let's fly off to the right, left, I mean, and there we go. And let's fly back. I can boost to counteract, there we go. 
and let's fly off this way and at the other side. Great. Okay. Let's close that. Uh, we'll save that and we'll uh, set up the collisions with the background. So file and save. So we need to sort out when our lander hits the crash area, it blows up. Now, we also need to do is we, we get a penalty and we lose fuel when we crash. So I'm just going to click on the application. And then in the application, I can choose values and make a new global value. A global value will save between the levels or if a level restarts. So we need that because the level restarts each time we land. So we're going to rename it by clicking on where it says global value A. Double click and just write fuel and then a default start value. So 900 works well for our game. All right, we can get on with coding the actual collision rule here. So new condition that if the lander collision with another object and we'll choose the crash area one, then we'll want to destroy it but we'll need to destroy it for many different reasons. So we're gonna make an event for blowing up, which means that it can be called, the event can be called under lots of different situations. So we'll right click under the timer and say fire an event after given delay. So after zero seconds and press okay, we want to fire an event and we'll just name it blow up. It can be called whatever you want, but it needs to match the next part. So new condition, click on the words, timer on event and this is where it needs to match blow up so it needs to match exactly what that's written we're going to do a few things so first of all we'll subtract from the fuel so special conditions right click we will change a global value we will subtract from it and fuels there and we're going to subtract 25 points of fuel we're also going to destroy the lander so right click and destroy the lander and then also we're going to fire another event after a few seconds so let the player realize they've crashed so and then right click under uh, the timer fire an event after given delay after three seconds this time so change that to three we're going to fire an event called reset and then we just need to create that so new condition click on the word timer on event now this time the event is reset and underneath the storyboard controls that picture of a chessboard right click there we want to jump to frame frame one now we could choose restart the frame and it would do exactly the same thing but jump to frame is useful because we want our music to continue and uh, later on so we'll we'll leave it as jump to frame but for for most intents and purposes, you could just use restart the current frame, but that would affect our music later on that we're going to add. So jump to frame one. Uh, well, now we can test it out. If we run our application and we fly down, we will disappear. Fuel will be lost and we will restart three seconds later. So do you see that we're starting uh, in the same place each time that's not great let's uh let's set that up so in our frame editor let's move us higher up and in the event editor we will add a new condition storyboard control start a frame and set our x position so right click position set the x coordinate to a random range between zero and then if you press tab, it will select the next section and the frame. So click on the storyboard controls frame width. So any point between the beginning and end of the frame. So if we run application now, we will start off in one point. And if we crash, will be teleported to another area and there we are over there also uh, in lunar lander the movement starts with us being pushed to the right so let's just set that up and it's set within the lander's movement properties so we click on it and click on the running man we have something called an initial impulse so we'll set that to two and direction we'll select that 
and we'll clear it, reset it, and choose to the right. So now if we run our application, you can see that we're going, but not to the right, sorry. Double click that, or we'll set it to the left, because that's the way we want to boost. So now if we run our application, there we go. Do you see we're not facing the right angle? We're flying, flying against the way that we were facing. We're starting at a random angle, and we can just sort that out really easily under the start of frame. When we set our position, we can also right click and angle, scale and angle. We can set our angle to zero. And that will, and it doesn't matter, zero for speed rather than quality. It's such a small picture. Now if we run our application. Let's get rid of this. There we go. We're pointing the right way and dropping down. Now what's not clear is this ground. This ground doesn't seem like ground. It, um, I know it's blocky at the moment. We'll sort that out next. But before we do, we just need to fill this area in to make it look like it's a lunar surface. So let's close our test application and go back into our frame editor. And we will insert a new object. And this time it's going to be a backdrop object. And we're going to click to put it down. And then we will edit it. So right click and edit. And I'm just going to import, but you could draw it yourself. You could clear in. It's just a kind of a lunar, a lunar drawing in pixels. And if you use the paint, you can then fill in all the area. Now backdrop objects, you can have um, so many of them on screen because they don't take up much memory. So it doesn't matter if you have hundreds and hundreds of uh, backdrop objects or even thousands of backdrop objects because they're just treated like an image. So we can just do this and uh, fill it in. But I will fast forward this uh, so you can see it all done. So I've filled it in. Now in paint mode, if you make a mistake, you can always do edit and undo, but then you have to reselect what you're painting with. Or if you've done the wrong thing, if you end paint mode by either clicking on paint mode or right clicking, you can just select the objects that you want to get rid of and press the delete key on the keyboard, not backspace, but delete and they will go. So there we go. It's filled in um, across there and there's some at the bottom. Let's select those, press delete. And there we go. Just tidy it up. The player wouldn't see them, but it's just neat. Let's uh, change the background so that it's black, so it looks like space. And that we can we could do with some back, backdrop objects, a quick backdrop maybe. But the quickest way is to select the frame and just choose the background color of the frame to being black. And there we go. It's starting to look a mu much more lunar-like at the moment. So let's save that file and save. So the next thing we're going to do is decide the areas which are going to get us points for landing. So we're going to insert a new object and we're going to make it active so we can check the collisions and we'll rename it. I'll call this landing times one. This will be our one point landing surface. So I'm just going to uh, right click on it and edit it and I'm going to clear it and I'm just going to choose the color representing sort of how hard it is and I'll use a green color to show it's easy and I'll just write on it that it's one time so I'm going to use the text tool choose black um, I'm happy with the font I've already got but you can change it click on it and times one now if it, your font is too big or small just click on font and you can change it live there make it bigger or smaller to match what you want but that's fine and press OK. Now there's a few things we need to do to make this um, work with the code that we're going to add and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a alterable value. Now these values aren't global like the ones in the application they apply to the specific uh, object so let's just give it a new one and double click and let's call this a uh, bonus. And this is a, a one times bonus, so I'll give it a one. The next thing we need to do is put it in a qualifier. A qualifier is a group that um, allows you to have lots of code or, or one piece of code for lots of things. So let's click on the events, 
click the blank spacing qualifier, click edit, and click add. And I'm going to say that these are just I'm going to call them areas, but you can select any qualifier you like, and you can just stretch this box out so you can see all of them at once. It's just a name, but areas make sense. Okay, press OK. Um, then what you need to do is you need to make a few more of these. So I'm going to clone it just to save time. So I'm going to right click, clone object, and I'm going to make five of them. And it will automatically number them. Because we have a one at the end, it will automatically add one. And so for landing two, I'm going to clear that, make it a sort of lighter colored green, click on the font, and this is times two. Put that in. And then I'm going to make sure in the alt for values, I change the bonus to two. And while I'm there, I'll do the bonus to three on this one, bonus to four. It says which one you have selected, so that should help you. And bonus to five. And then let's just fast forward through this bit. So there we have the different landing pads. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to shuffle them to the side out of the frame just so we have them all there when we need. And I'm then going to decide which areas are difficult to land on. So this area here, I'm going to delete the crash area and I'm going to pull in, I think this is quite an easy landing. So I'm going to pull in a two times. And this one is even easier. I'll make this a one times. So you can just drag from the side. You could use the paint tool if you want, but it's probably quicker just to drag from the side. This one down here, well, that's very hard. I think five times if you manage to land on that. And just make your way across. You can just decide your different landing points, how much they're worth, and work your way through that. I'm just going to jump to completing my section. And there we go. I've added in different ones depending on different values of how difficult I think it is to land in certain places. So the higher value for the harder, harder to land places. Right, so the next thing we need to do is tidy up all of these blocky corners. The issue is that um, we, we're working on a grid, so it will look blocky. So we're going to smooth it out by adding some extra objects. So if you pull in a crash area from the sidebar to the top, I'm going to select it. Now, the same way that these landing ones are all in qualifiers, we're going to put all the crash areas that we're making in a qualifier. So before we clone this crash area, which we'll do in a moment, we will go to its events, qualifiers, and edit it. We're going to add in We'll say this is a danger. That makes sense. Press OK. So we've got the qualifier set. Let's clone it. Right click and clone it. And we're going to make five clones. And it's that each one's going to be look slightly different. So for number two, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the polygon tool, the filled polygon tool, drawing with transparent. And I'm just going to draw in some spikes. So I'm just clicking here and I'm making like a little mountain. There we go. And then I'm going to click around the top corners and then double click to finish. And you see it's added some spikes. You could just import our own. So you could just do that there if you wanted. But I'm happy with that. Press OK. And uh, I'm just going to work my way through. So I'm going to right click and edit. And I'll just import crash area three. So I've just uh, drawn those. So we've got two as being like a little mountain, three a slope to the right, four a slope up to the left, and then five a dip in the middle. And then what we'll do is we'll do the same as before. We'll just draw around and select these and move them to the edge. And then we'll just pull in the ones we need. So I need this one here. And to save time, you can hold down control on the keyboard and drag, and that will make a copy, not a clone, but a duplicate of whatever you're moving. So you can set up your own little um, mountains and things like that. And then on any flat bit, you can just add the 
the spiked mountain to make it look really hazardous like that. And then on the slopes, you can use crash area um, three and four, depending on which way it's slanted. And then work your way through. So I'm just going to fast forward doing that. So I've added those in um, and they're looking nice and spiky and dangerous. But because our code is only set to be for crash area one, I can only actually crash into the solid blocks. So let's change that. Let's go into the event editor and do the final bit of coding for this section. And it's really, really simple. We had it set to you crash with crash area one. We're just going to double click on that and change it to any dangers. And then now if we run our application, we won't be able to land yet. We haven't done that code. But if I'm to hit into any of these, I'm destroyed. And three seconds later, I'm back in the game. We're going to add some counters in because then that'll mean that we're able to land safely. I should just float through these and float off screen. Yep. There we go. Bye. Um, so we will add some counters in to keep track of our, our stats. And then uh, we'll add in some landing after that. So save your work. Close your test application, and then file and save. On this next section, we're going to be going between the frame editor to add some counters and then the event editor to add the conditions and the rules for those. So go to the frame editor and we need to go to the very beginning of the frame. Now you'll see that there's a dotted line. If you could just see along here, there's a dotted line which depicts where the first sort of view that the player would see is. And we're going to have to work within these boundaries because our counters that show how much fuel and things we have, they will remain static. They won't follow the frame. And uh, so that means that they will, they will always be where we put them in relation to the edge of this screen we're looking at here. So we're going to insert a new object and it's going to be a counter. Press OK. And I'm just going to click and drop it down here by the background because it's going to be black. Don't drop it on the black background. So you can either go down off screen or drop it on where your background is. And let's give this a name in the about properties. This is going to be our, our counter for fuel. So I'll leave the word counter there and fuel. And let's change it in its settings. We're going to change it from numbers into text. And then in the text options, we'll set it to be white. And we quite like the small font font, but you could choose a different font, whatever suited. And let's set it to size 18. There we go. Now let's pop this up at the top because it's quite an important counter. And we also need to add some, a string, which is some writing to say what it is. So we're going to insert a new object and down near the bottom at S string, click OK, click to put it down. And again, change its color to white, change its font to uh, match. So this was small fonts and size was 18 for us. You might not have small fonts, so just choose a different font. And if we click on it once on the text itself, we can stretch this box so that it'll match. And I'm just going to align it horizontally to the right. And I'm also going to just change its size. And I'm going to change what it says. So in its settings, I'm going to check, double click where it says text for paragraph one um, or single click even and fuel. And if we go to about properties, I will call it, let's call it the title for fuel. Now, the reason that we don't call it fuel title is so that alphabetically things sit nicer together. All the counters will be counter altitude counter fuel and title fuel title score and they sit nicely together and we can go into the event editor now so the rule for the fuel is a new condition that with player one the joystick repeats while they press up that's our thrust button and only do that only take off fuel when they're pressing up and there's also one in there. So what we can do is we can we can copy this rule into line eight so it both have to be true. 
So we can click and pull, and it can you see the little plus sign appears if we pull it onto eight, and it adds it in. That's one way of doing it. I just undo. The other way, we can right click on the words and insert another condition, and it would just be pick or count compared to the number of lander objects is one, and that's the same thing, slightly slower way of doing it. So we're just checking that there's one when we move top, and what we want to do is subtract from the fuel. Now the fuel is held in the global values, remember, of our application? There it is there. So it's under this special conditions. If you right click, change a global value like we did with blow up, and we want to subtract from fuel one. Now let's uh, make it that the fuel counter shows us how much fuel there is. So new condition with the cogs always and then for the fuel let's right click it and we want to set the counter to match up with the special retriever global value fuel so i'll say the word fuel there and it'll be in blue because it's it's a variable it's a global value that it can it can copy okay now that's almost all we need to do but we have the issue that when our fuel goes below zero the fuel count will go below zero. So we just select that. We want to set the minimum value for the counter to be zero. That way it can't ever go below zero. The, the fuel global value will go below zero, but our count will never show below zero. So if we run our application, we should see we've got 900 fuel. And as we boost along, you can see the fuel drops and drops and drops as we go down. So we use it up. If you feel that it's using fuel too quickly, uh, you can just start off with a larger amount of fuel. Probably uh, the easiest way to do it. You could also limit it so that it's not uh, always when you're pressing top, but you could add in, you could right click and insert a timer of every um, hundredth of a second or every five hundredths of a second. So it slows down the counter use. But that's the fuel counter. Let's save that, file, and save. So the next counter we'll add in is the altitude counter. And to do that, we're going to go into the frame editor and we need to create something just before we create the altitude counter. We need to create something to select whatever is directly beneath us so we can take a measurement. So we're going to insert a new object, an active object, click to put it down, and we're going to name it Let's call it the sensor. And we're going to change its size. Its width, it only needs to be sort of two pixels wide, and its height 800, the same as the game. And we want it to start off at the top, but let's just edit the way it looks. Now, you might, might find it really hard to right click and click edit. Pressing enter will be easy but you can always use this uh, sidebar. Things get added in. So let's find where the sensor's gone. There it is at the top. We right click, we can choose edit, and then we can get this up here, this uh, image editor. Let's clear it. Let's fill it in with a color. I'm just gonna make it red to stand out. And in terms of the hotspot, I want to place it at the very top middle. There we go, so I'm gonna use the quick move there. That means that when I now set the Y coordinate to zero, the top point will be at the top. So it's moved to zero. So a few things we're gonna do with this bar, we're going to go to a display and we're gonna make it invisible. Now it's gonna follow wherever our lunar lander is when we put that in the code, but let's add in the altitude. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this fuel counter and I'm going to clone it because I want one the same to save time. Let's click on it and rename it. So now it'll be counter altitude. And I'm just going to move it over to the other side of the screen and I'll clone the fuel title and let's call it title alt and double click on it. You can then just delete what was there before. Altitude. 
and let's move it over to match where the altitude is. Great, into the event editor. So always, we always want the sensor bar to follow where we are on the X position. So let's right click, say position, set the X position of the sensor. So right click underneath the sensor on that line of always, set the X coordinate position to be whatever the lunar lander's position X coordinate is. So I'll say X lander up there. Great. So now we can calculate the distance when it's over two different types of land of the dangers and the areas. So new condition that if the sensor collision is overlapping another object, some of the dangers, then on the altitude counter, we can set the counter to be from the danger. We will get the position. We will get the Y coordinate of the top edge. So from the top of the danger, and we will subtract lander position, Y coordinate of bottom edge. So Y top group dangers minus the Y bottom of lander. And then we'll do the same for the safe area. So new condition, when the sensor collision overlapping another object is overlapping one of the group areas, one of these landing spots, then we will right click under the um, the altitude counter and set counter. And this time it'll be the group areas position, the Y coordinate of top edge minus the landers position, Y coordinate of bottom edge. So Y top group areas minus Y bottom lander. And if we run our application, we should be able to see that we should get a readout of altitude that goes down as we go down and all the way down to pretty much zero as we crash. There we go. Um, once we're destroyed, it can't make the calculation. And so it just resets the numbers, but that's fine. We can cope with that. Let's close that and save that file and save. So the next thing we need to do is we'll do an altitude and speed counters. So we'll go into our frame editor and we will clone two copies of the altitude. So there'll be three in total and we'll do it with the counter as well. Right click clone three versions of that and we will name these and let's just pop these up a bit so they match. Oops match in terms of the grid. So after altitude, we will want to know speed. So let's, if we click in the about properties, we can change the name to title speed, and then we can go to the settings and type in speed under paragraph one. And then while we're there, let's go to this one and call it angle and then go to about properties title angle and for the counters let's rename those as well so rather than counter altitude 2 in the about properties we'll change it to counter speed and counter for this final one counter angle great let's go to the event editor these are slightly easier to set up. We don't need any sensor bars or anything because click team handles the physics movements already. It keeps a track of those. We just need to display them. So we're going to make a new condition. And the reason we're going to make a new condition is that it's going to only, we're only going to track the speed and the angle before we've landed. So if we click on the lander here and go to AZ, we're going to add something called a flag. Now a flag is something that's either on or off. So if I click new, I get flag zero. And if I click twice on flag zero, I'm going to call this landed. We only want to keep track of the speed and the angle before we land. Once we've landed, that's fine. We, we will, um, we will just use our initial landing angle and speed. But once we've landed and the speeds changed, we don't want to record that. So a new condition that for the lander, 
if the odd floor value flag is off landed then that's when we want to keep track of the speed and stuff i'm going to right click under the counter speed we're going to set the counter now we want this to be a whole number we don't want to have the fractions on it that the physics movement has so we're going to click on the special and we're going to go to conversion round value and then we can enter the value in here which is going to be the landers movement physics it's going to be its velocity which is its movement in a direction its velocity and we're going to times it by 10 to get a decent number so you end up with round open parenthesis uh, p velocity of the lander times 10 or the the star button there which is times or shift and eight on some keyboards or you can just use the calculator button there okay uh, and then we'll do the angle so we'll need to round that as well so we'll under the angle counter counter angle we'll right click set the counter to be the landers oh no before we do that sorry the special conversions will round and then lander scale angle get angle now if we run our application there we go we've got our speed and our angle so we can slow down our speed let's see if we can get it there we go slow it right down and there we go and our angle as well so you can see that a kind of a slow moving speed is about 30 and then a all right speed is 100 and a fast is you know anything over 100 is quite fast so we'll use those values for safe landings as we go off there we go right let's uh close our as we float back down let's close our test application and save it file and save right we are going to add in our score and just also some limits for our movement so if we go to our frame editor we'll go across to where our fuel is and we will clone that object press ok and let's re click on it and let's call it score and in the about properties let's change the title to title score now it's not going to we're not going to clone this counter click team has scores built in so let's go to insert new object and just find the score object not the high score but the score object click to put it down and let's make it make it settings match so let's uh go into settings and we'll change it from numbers to text and we'll change the text options to white and the font to small fonts size 18 and just move that down there fantastic that's fine just make sure the scores in line with it and let's go to the event editor the score will automatically update when we start adding scores but let's go to the event editor to limit our movement so a new condition if our lunar lander if its direction and we check a direction and we'll just choose all the directions of when the lander's pointing down from sort of 24 to 31 then at that point we want to right click and direction select direction to the right so we'll just force it if it goes further to the right and let's do that again new condition the lander direction compare the lander and let's do these ones here from 16 to 23 get rid of zero and right click direction under the lander right click direction select direction to the left let's run our frame so now I can turn I now can't point downwards I can only just make sure that I can point up and that's perfect great now we've got all of our calculations calculating so uh, let's have a go at working out the score for landing on these pads 
close your test application and file and save. Now, what's quite important in most games is a clear explaining to the player why they are getting points or why they are being penalized or punished for some actions. So in our frame editor, we're gonna add some writing on the screen to let you know how you're landing or when you're running out of fuel or any, any kind of instruction we need to give the player. So we're gonna insert a string, but we'll just clone one of these we've had before. So I'm gonna clone the angle and just move it down more towards the center of the screen and stretch it out. Click on it once and stretch it out and set it to be horizontally in the center. So I'm just gonna make sure that it goes to that dotted line like I showed before. So you might have to look on the gray area to see where it is. It's nice in the center. Let's change its about properties and let's call this information. And let's change in its settings, its paragraph. Let's change it, let you know that you're landing. So landing sequence. initiated something sort of sciencey i just click off it and there we go and that's going to be really useful for when we land to appear and to disappear um so let's just make sure it does disappear after we've started the game so in the event editor we'll just say new condition the timer if the timer is equal to a certain value of three seconds, then at that point, if we just find the information there, if we right click and change the alterable string to be nothing. So just those double inverted commas or speech marks and that'll do it. So if we run our application after one, two, three, the text goes and we can so pay attention to landing. So let's save that file and save. Now on to coding the landings. So first thing we need to do is that when the lander touches a area that they can land on, that the lander stops. So new condition, lander, collision with another object, any of the areas, so group areas, and underneath the lander, right click movement, stop. And that way, You'll see here, if I run the application, if you fly down, this is getting in the way all the time. If we fly down, let's land on these threes here without hitting the wall. It means we'll sort of land. That's great. And we can take off again and try and land again. We don't get any points, so let's uh, sort that out. Um, we also need to check our angles and such. So we need a separate new condition this time. So new condition, if the lander collision with another object, with the area, and this time we're gonna right click and we're gonna insert that the lander, it's ultra values, the flag, remember that landed flag? We're gonna check it's off. So this is the first time that you've touched down on one of these pads and we'll need to do a, several things to make this work. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to ignore player control. So a right click, player control, ignore control. So we can't move anymore. And then for the player, we'll need to do a couple of things. Now we'll need to know which one we've landed on, which bonus we're gonna get. So we're gonna copy the bonus variable from the area to the lander. So let's just click on our lander here. And in AZ, we will add a new ultra value. We'll double click on this and we'll name it. And that will help us. We could just use it, its name ultra value A, but calling it bonus is really gonna help us. So let's do the two things, set the bonus and set landed on for the lander. So right click, ultra values, let's set the bonus to be whatever the area value A to Z retrieve bonus. So that copies that over. And the next thing, right click, let's flags set on landed. 
So those two things happen at that point. Then we'll want to reset the game, but we'll give it a few seconds. So that three seconds like we had when we crashed before with the timer. So we'll right click under the timer on the same line, fire event after given delay after three seconds, and we called it reset. So the one where it restarts the game. So just there it is on line six. Okay, so the final thing is we're going to activate a whole set of new code. So we're going to make something called a group. So we're going to right click where line 20 is or whatever number you've got here, right click on the number. We're going to insert a group of events and we will call this landed. Now we're going to right click on landed and edit it and make sure it's not active when the frame starts. Press OK and it goes into sort of a light gray instead of black there. So the final part of this, this whole section here is we're going to activate all the code that happens there. So right click on special conditions and we're going to go to group of events, activate and it's landed. Okay, so there's sort of five things all happening under those four ticks. So how will we know if it's a bad landing? So we want to, if it's a bad landing, destroy the ship at that point. So a new condition, make sure it's in landed. So it, what it does is it indents the, uh, the new conditions under. So 21 is within landed, 22 is out of landed. So make sure it's indented like this one here. So new condition and we can check some counters. So first of all, if our speed, compare speed to a value. If our speed is greater than a hundred, then at that point we want to fire an event after given delay and just zero seconds. This is the blow up one again before. So make sure it's spelt the same way as you spelt your, um, your condition, your event up here, blow up. So we want to blow it up, but let's let the player know why they got blown up. So underneath the information, let's right click and change the octopus string to fast. Perfect. And another way of bad landing is the angle is going to be wrong. So a perfect angle, would be 90, um, 90. And I think anything acceptable probably would be 30 degrees either side. So that's 60 and 120. So a new condition, if the counter of the angle, if we compare it to a value, if it is lower than 60, and now we're gonna do an or, and an or means that either of them, but not both of them have to be true. So let's right click on the 60 and choose or operator logical, right click on the or operator logical and insert counter angle, compare the counter to a value if it is greater than 120. So 90 with 30 either side, so 60 and 120. Then at that point we want to fire event blow up. So I'm I'm just going to pull the tick down and it will duplicate and copy over that action. And then on here, let's just let them know that it was a bad angle. So change alterable string under the information to bad angle. Okay. Well, I think we just now need to try crashing now. So let's run our application and just try that. And we can see that if we try and Let's land on these ones. If we try and do it at a bad angle, let's just do it bad angle, bad angle. Ah, but do you see our fuel drop down? We've got no fuel left, so we can't control it. That's because this condition where we landed with a bad angle, it was firing the event blow up time and time and time and time again. So what we can do is just to limit it so we only get the one penalty. Um, here it is. Let's just move it along. Where well, it's subtracting 25 from fuel all the time. Let's uh, right click and insert a special condition, a limit 
only run this event once, just once, and that's it. So if we run our application now, let's try landing too quickly. So this should be too quickly. Let's see. Too fast. And then we lost some fuel, but didn't lose it all. And then if I do it perfectly, nothing will happen, hopefully. And I'll just float through the floor. No, I won't. I'll land, I'll land and nothing will be said. Yeah, there we go. Good. Great. And it restarts, but I don't get any score. So let's work out the scoring in the next section. So close that, file, and save. So with this part, let's just scroll down to get back to the landed um, section. We are going to check that things are good or they're excellent or they're perfect conditions for landing. So first of all, we know that we'll be destroyed if, uh, if it's bad. So we know that this is a good landing at this point. So new condition. We can say that if our speed compare to the value, if it is lower or equal, lower or equal to 100, then that's good speed. And we can insert the counter angle, compare it. If it is greater or equal to 60, and if it is, right click and insert the counter angle, compare the counter angle is lower or equal to 120. Then this was just a good landing. This is within the realms of, of good landing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some score on there. So uh, we are going to right click score and add to score. And we're gonna add 50 and we're gonna times it by whatever the bonus was. So the lander, the value, let's get the bonus. So no matter how you land for landing on one, you'll get 50, 100 for two, 150, 200 and 250 for landing on the different numbers there. Great. And we'll also give it a fuel bonus. So right click, let's change a global value. Let's add to the fuel and let's give you 50 units of fuel as well. And that would be a good landing. So we'll go along and right click, change octopole string, good landing. Now, what we want to do is we want to up the score if it's better than that. So we're gonna add some new conditions in. This condition will run every time we land, but these ones will only run if we've done very well. So let's, um, I'm just gonna drag down these and just pay attention to which one you're dragging down. We can make it slightly easier, let's do that. If we just click on the counter angle, in the about, we can change the icon. So this is the angle. So let's just put a big A on that. Let's make it a bit thicker. This is just the icon of it. So if we do an A there, and then we'll find the speed and let's put a big blue S for speed. And there we go. And that will help us know what we're doing. So if the speed is less than or equal to 50, and the angle that we're landing at, if it's between, say, 70 and 110, then we've landed slower and at a better angle. So then at that point, we want to right click, score, add to score. Let's give them 50 bonus points for doing that. So they'll get their original score and another 50. And if we drag down this tick, which says good landing, we can edit that and say, you know, excellent landing or great landing. And then finally, we'll do one more. We'll do a perfect landing. So I'll say that if you land with a speed of lower than 30, so going really slow, um, and I've just dragged those onto the number to get them here. So if it's greater or equal to, um, let's go quite close. Let's go 85 and 95. So five degrees either side of 90, then it'll be a perfect landing. So let's add to score and let's 
let's add 100 to score this time. So they'll get their normal points, plus 50 if it's, if it's excellent, plus 150, plus the normal score. So let's do that. So let's drag that down and edit it on the information to perfect landing. And let's just also let them know that they got that points. So let's say plus 150. And I'm just going to right click and edit this one. Go back and say plus an extra 50 for that one. Great. Now, we don't want these to keep running and running and running and keep on adding the score like we did before. So we'll just have a new condition and we'll say always. And then what we'll do is we'll deactivate the landed group. We turned it on when we landed, but now that we finish landing, we right click on the cogs, group of events, deactivate landed so that it works through this and turns it off. So if we run our application now, let's test this out and see if there's, uh, if we get some points, see if we can land slow enough. So let's go right down here, nice and slow. What speed are we going to? Yeah, speed's good. The angle's not good there. Angle's great now. And oh, excellent landing. The speed was just a bit too fast. Let's try again. Perfect landing. 150. Fantastic. Good. Doing well. So we just need it that when we run out of fuel, that the game ends. So let's just uh, close the test application and just create that really quickly. So outside of the landed loop down here, where it's back to the normal indentation, we're going to say a new condition that at the storyboard at the start of frame, and let's right click and insert and the special will compare to a global value that our fuel, now this could be zero or it could be lower. So we're going to say lower or equal because this will just, this might go lower than zero. If the fuel is less than zero there, then we want to go to the next frame and we'll add those in in the next section. Let's save that file and save. So to add in our end of game, where we get to our scores, we'll go to the storyboard editor and we can just click on the number two to get a new frame. And we will title this, let's call this game over. And then frame one, we can title sort of the main game. To enter it, we just select it. We can click the number two if we wanted again to enter it, or we can select it and go to the frame editor. Now let's make it black to match in. So click on it and then go to its settings and background color black. And we want to insert a new object and this will be a high score table. So click team handles this all itself because we've got a score, it can handle high scores. So high score. Okay. And drop it in the gray area again, just so you can see it. And let's change its text options, make it white match with whatever font you want. So we're going with small fonts, but I'm going to make it a lot bigger, maybe sort of size 24. Great. Now you see it's all crushed together. So we need to click on it once, stretch it out. There we go. That's great. And then we'll add a string in as well. Insert a new object, a string. Click to put it down, make it white. In fact, I'm going to make it light blue because it's a title and I'm going to call, just say game over on it. So I'm going to make it nice and big, 35 maybe. Click on it once, stretch it out and let's change paragraph one to say game over. There we go. And in the text options, let's set it to center as well to match in move this to the center. You can, there's an option for arrange, align objects and align in frame. There we go. The horizontal center and it'll move it exactly where the center is. Align in frame, horizontal center. 
Great. Now I'm going to clone this string here, make another copy because I need to tell the player what to do next. So we can say press up to restart. And in our event editor, nice and easily, new condition, joystick, read joystick state. If they press up, it's already selected. Then we're going to right click and we're going to restart the application. We're not going to jump to a frame this time because we need to reset scores and reset the fuel. And that won't happen unless we restart the whole application because they're global. So restart the application. Uh, if we run our application, if we quickly run out of fuel, let's get some points, then run out of fuel. Okay, good landing. Yep, great. Now let's see if we can boost the way out of fuel. Four, three, two, one. Let's just allow gravity to take its effect. Here we go, low fuel and smash, we're gone. Game over, there we go, high score. Yay, 50 points, press up to restart. And we're back in the game with zero score and the fuel back. That works fine. Let's save our work, close that, file and save. Now we've got a end of game screen, we might as well add a start screen. So once again, storyboard editor, click on the last number to add it. Um, let's rename it, let's call it title. And pull on the thumbnail to the top to place it at the top. Uh, to enter it, select it and go to the frame editor. Let's select it in the workspace toolbar and change the background color to black. Now to save time, I'm just gonna go down to the high score because this string, which says game over, I'm going to now use to name the game. So I've just, all I've done is I pulled it from here over here and I'm going to pull string two in and press up to start and change game over to the name of the game. So Pluto Parker. And I might even make this size a little bit bigger. So click on the font name and well, let's make it a lot bigger while we're here. Also, it'd be probably nice to add a picture in so we can insert a new object and a backdrop. Right click and edit it. And I've got a picture of a planet that we can use. Okay. Let's pop that in. We could add the little spaceship in so I can pull that in from the main game. Now, it will need a physics engine in this frame as well. And so I can pull that over. But this time I want to change my gravity strength to zero. So when I run my frame, I've got the little ship going along, but no gravity. And when it reaches the end of the screen, if we go to the event editor, we can say new condition, the lander position, test the position of the lander. If it's gone outside of this, this, the play area, then right click and position set the X coordinate to zero. Let's just run that and test it. So run the application. Let's wait for us to get there. Do, 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 do. We also should add a bit more information about how to play the game. And uh, so you can just type that up there. There we go. Go off and come back on the other side. That seems to work fine. The press up to start that needs to be sorted. Now, if we say new condition, press up to start, that will work fine until we restart the game because we have this issue that in the game over screen, we press up to restart and it will restart the game while we're still pressing up. And so it'll jump this screen. So what we're gonna do is put a sort of time delay in. We're gonna say new condition. We're gonna say the timer, if it is greater than, and let's say half a second, so 50 hundredths of a second. Oops, there we go, 50 hundredths of a second. And right click and insert 
joystick read joystick state. So I clicked on the words right click insert joystick read joystick state. So if it is greater than half a second and you move top, then we will go to the next frame. So now we run our application. Compress up and then we go, we're playing the game. And then we won't have an issue of it automatically restarting. So while we're here, we will add in some sound as well. Now, if we click on the application, we have an option in runtime options, which says play sounds over frames, meaning that when one frame level goes to the next, it carries on playing. So let's click that. And then in the start screen, in the event editor where we are, we can say new condition. When the storyboard controls start a frame, or you could even do it here in terms of when you press top, that um, it starts playing the sound. That you right click samples, play and loop sample. Let's click browse. And let's choose this music beat one that we've got here. How many times? Zero for a continuous loop. So zero is fine. And there we go. So now we run our application. Get some music happening in the background. Press up. The music continues. We also have some other sound effects that you can add in um, in the main game. So you'll find that if we go to the event editor, um, that you could add so for low fuel warning when uh, when the fuel uh, is less than 100, that comes up. Now, one issue you might have spotted is that it never says no fuel. It is saying no fuel, but because of the order of these, these conditions, it's saying no fuel and it's being replaced with low fuel. So I'm just going to drag 17 on to 16 and they'll swap around. So when we have no fuel, so we've got some samples for uh, low fuel it is. So if we right click, um, if we right click on the sound, deselect and right click and samples, play sample, browse, and we've got a, a low fuel. We've also got when you land successfully. So um, we know that we've landed successfully here on line 23 when the angles are all right. So let's right click samples, play sample, browse and landed got one for exploding so that's the blow up one so online blow up samples play sample browse explode um we've got one for altitude so what you could do is you could do a new condition you could do every and use a calculation and so you could use a calculation based off whatever your counter altitude is but it's out of hundredths of a second. So you probably don't want it to beep so quickly all the time. So you probably want to times it by two. So the star and the two. And so then we can sample, play sample, browse, altitude. And then the boosting one's interesting because the boosting one is we want it to happen when you move upwards, but it says repeat, and we don't want the sound to keep on playing on top of itself. So we're gonna do a brand new condition down at the bottom, new condition that player one joystick, read joystick state that they push up and right click insert that there is, there is a land on screen. So click on lander, pick our count, compare to the number of landers is equal to one like we did before. So if you press up and there's a lander, samples, then we want to play and loop a sample, browse, and that's for boost. And then to stop it, oh, zero for a continuous loop, like the music. To stop it is when we let go. So new condition, joystick, re uh, repeat while joystick's pressed up. And then we're going to right click and negate when we're not pressing up. Then samples stop a specific sample boost. 
So what that means is when, when we tap up, it will play. And as soon as we let go, it will stop. So we run the frame. Have the sounds working. If we managed to land successfully, the altitude dropping. Now, that altitude kept on beeping once we'd landed. So maybe we right click and insert that the player's flag, ultra values flag, is off. So when we haven't landed, that it plays the altitude. Well, th those are all optional, uh, as is the next part. Um, but let's save that. So file and save. Now, when we blow up, we just disappear. There's no animation. Um, so kind of to make it feel a bit more like the original where it everything was drawn with vector graphics, let's, uh, let's have the ship kind of shattering apart and we'll use particles for that. So in the frame editor, we're going to insert a new object and we're going to choose something called physics particles. If we go to the settings, we don't want to create particles at the start of the frame. So we'll turn that off and we don't want them to be rainbow balls. So we're going to click on particle images and click on the three dots. And let's just delete all these. Because our ship's so tiny, we probably only want it to be about five pixels by five pixels big in the size, press apply and just sort of a color of the ship. And then you can just rub out with maybe size one, maybe rub out a bit here and there. Uh, we have got a, a very tiny explosion artwork you could use, but you could just draw your own. Oops, you could just draw your own and make sure the hot spots in the center. Well, there we go. That will be the explosion and we just need to tie it into the ship. So in the event editor, what we want to do is we want to say on blow up, we want to position the particles wherever you are. So position, select position, relative to, and relative to the lander. Okay. And then we want to right click and we want to create particles. And so we could create 10, 10 particles. That's probably enough to have bits of 10 bits of ship come off. Now, the issue is that this, this action is happening after we've destroyed the ship. So we need to double click to enter this event list. And you can see that this is destroyed right here. And then we're creating, we're setting the position later. So this destroy needs to move to the bottom and then we need to go back to the event editor. So let's have a look at that. So if we run our application, and crash. Let's go see if we can crash. Now, did you see those particles fly off? Maybe you didn't at a speed of a gazillion miles an hour. Uh, if I turn create particles on from start and run the frame, you should see the particles spraying out. There we go. It's because they're so small that the speed that they have is just too much. So I'm going to set the speed to much lower to be maybe just one uh, and the speed interval to be zero. So let's run the frame. It's, it's a bit better, but they're still coming out at a really high speed. Um, and so we're going to up the density. The more dense an object is, the more force it's needed to move. So let's just take it to a thousand rather than a hundred. We run our frame. Oh, much better, much better. Okay. So let's just uh, turn off, create particles at start a frame. So they're being created at a nicer speed, but in the event editor, we want them to not just uh, fly off everywhere. We want them to, to actually, um, hit hit the ground really so we're going to go to new condition and click on the physics particles a particle collides with another object so if it collides with any of the dangers then we want it to right click and we choose stop particle 
and then the same for if it collides with the areas. Physics particle collision with another object. Uh, no, sorry, a particle collides. Mm, careful, particle collides with another object, not the box, but the particle collides with group areas. Right click, stop particle. Um, and you might want to adjust, if you find it in the list, you might want to adjust their gravity. So currently it's a hundred. So uh, our spaceship is set much lower. I think we set this slightly higher at maybe five because our spaceship is set at three, is it? Yeah, ours is 3%. Let's set it slightly higher so that these things drop a bit quicker so they don't just float off into the air. Let's see if we can hit into the ground. Perfect. And they bounce off. You might want to up the density. You might want to change things around um, so that they move a bit slower. But I'm happy with that. So I'm going to save my work file and save. So the final thing that you might want to do in your game is make it a bit clearer about what is a good speed and what is a good angle. So what we can actually do with these uh, counters, we can change the colors of them. So we can build in a new condition for the angle and we could say compare the counter to a value. And if it is greater than 120, we know it's going to be a bad angle to land at. So we can right click under the counter and we can choose text and we can choose set text color and I'll make it red. And the same is going to be true for if it's lower than 60. So if we drag that down and double click on it, change it from greater to lower than 60, then we can set the font color red. So let's set it to uh, be white when it's uh, when it's within safe ranges. So we click and drag that down. We can say if it's lower or equal to 120, but then we need to, this is, be careful with this, we need to drag this 60 onto the number so it gets added. So if it's lower or equal to 120 or greater or equal to 60, then we'll right click text, set the font color, let's do it white. And then again, if we, well, I'm going to drag the whole rule down onto the word new condition. So drag the number onto the word new condition. I'm going to double click here. We've got, if it's between 85 and, oh, sorry, if it's between 95, if it's lower or equal and higher and equal to 85. So just double click on the numbers and change them. Then we can make it green. And the same thing with speed. So we can do a new condition if the speed if it is greater than 100, we know that's bad. So I'm just going to drag down that the RGB 25500 means full red and none of the other colors. I'm going to drag that down to here under the right column, make sure it's under speed and then drag this down and double click. If it's lower or equal, then that's white. And then drag that down again. If it's lower than 30 or equal to 30, and it's green. So now if we run our frame, if you watch the counters, you can see that when I get a good angle, it goes green. And if I get a good speed, oh, can I get a good speed? Doing it really badly. There we go. And so it just gives a much clearer idea to the player about what's going on and how well things are going. So, Luna Lander, perfect landing. What a way to end it. Uh, I hope you enjoy making the game and uh, have fun. Make sure that you um, let us know if you run into any problems and we'll try and help you out. Uh, Till next Retro Remake, goodbye.